Okay, folks. Today I got nine points you totally should check out if you are building your first Reason template. First of all, if you start Reason, you typically see the same as I do now. We got that master section that is folded down and we got our hardware interface. To start things off, we go to File and choose our templates. And over the years I discovered MT Plus FX is my way to go, so I will select this and start from there. Let's close the sequencer. What we've got here is a master section followed by four send effects that are predefined. Uh, we could change that later, but I opened this because we have something to do later on. In here, we got a combinator called master section where there is standard mastering stuff, so nothing fancy, but you can get away with this in your masters <coughs> in your master chain easily. But you also could choose from other presets. A second point is we change the master output into the control room output. This is a basic move, but what this enables us to do is if we go to the mixer and over here, we could select what we want to hear, even either the send effects or the returns of the effects. So either we get the dry signal that goes into an effect or the processed signal that comes out of an effect. So <clears throat> to demonstrate this, let's insert a red drum and a player just for quick demonstration. So now we are able to apply a reverb, for instance, and just listen to the return of the reverb, so we only hear what is processed by the reverb. Or we could check the levels of our sense. So this is very handy later on in the mixing and mastering process, but uh, keep in mind that's the first thing to do in a new template. Um, second thing to do is apply a filter to dynamic sidechain and we could easily do this with our channel EQ. We drag it in while it's holding shift and connecting the master out to its input and its output to the dynamic sidechain input of the master section. Let's crawl to the master compressor and enable it. And as you see, this external sidechain key button is lit, so it's activated. And as you see, now it's pumping, but if we enable our high pass filter on that and slightly raise it, we will see a change here in the master section. So so this keeps the low end out of the equation from the master compressor, means that uh, the low end isn't that much affected by the compression of the compressor itself. That's also a very cool mixing trick for later on. We deactivate this for now. There's a rack extension called Reference 5 by Red Rock Sound. We drag it in while stalling shift, so it doesn't get connected. And what we do now is open the hardware interface and select audio ins and outs. And we also need a simple audio splitter that we drag above our Reference 5. And what we do now is we connect the first output of the splitter to our Audi output and the control room out to the input of the splitter, followed by the second output of the splitter into the stereo inputs one. After that, we disconnect our sampling input and connect it to the main output of the reference 5. And depending on how much outboard equipment you got, uh, you could hook up, for instance, 
Audio input 1 is my microphone right now. Audio input 2 is another microphone in here. 3 and 4 Oh, 3 and 4 is my turntable. So we connect both to 4 and the last one should be my keyboard so we connect 5 and 6 to left and right of the fifth stereo input of Red Rock Sound. So uh, what we could do now is if we need to sample something that's in our song we could easily select output 1 and are able to straightly sample into the sampling input. Uh, this is really a thing because because everywhere in Reason are those sampling inputs. So for instance the Europa got a sampling input here and you could straight record into this little window. Uh, same goes for grain. We get a sampling input here. Even for all the drums if we open it up and select the NN Nano sampler we could sample straight into here. So the splitter and the reference 5 giving us the option to sample what is usually given out to the audio output and easily switch between mic 1, mic 2, my turntable and my keyboard. So this is uh, audio from the keyboard so I really would sample the keyboard instead of playing the MIDI notes. The next step, step 5, is reference tracks we grab ourselves another instance of reference make sure we press shift while doing that so it doesn't get connected this is where it gets a little bit tricky so we grab our output and connect it to the second reference and go from our main output into the audio output we create an audio track using ctrl t duplicating it with ctrl d for as many instances many instances we need. Let's make three and we connect the direct out into stereo input two, three, four and so on. Ref one, ref two, ref three. And now we could drag in songs that we like that fits our song to get reference points to change between them and we could select either our main output or the other three reference tracks. To keep this a little bit cleaner we select our channel EQ and our reference 5 while holding shift so we select all effects between and combine them into a combinator. So to get this out of the way we just need to click this little arrow here and now it's hidden from us until we need it. So it doesn't need much space here same goes for our reference tracks, we could collapse them down. Let's come to point six, which is all the important instruments, players and utility stuff. If you got a BPM that's typical for your music, so let's say 128 for house, you could set this to 128 and you are ready to go. So uh, keep this in mind before saving this template. Uh, you could set a standard BPM and it will start at the set BPM every time. The next thing would be all the instruments we need. Uh, to keep it simple, you should only drag in what you really need. So uh, my instrument of choice, in most situations, the red drum would be my way to go. The second instrument for me to go is the radical piano because these two instruments are in most of my sessions so uh, they would be great starters. We even could select our own sounds if we need to so we could initialize the patch or even choose a patch that's already been made. Same goes for the radical piano patch and even all the other patches you maybe need. This could also be great if you want to limit yourself to produce an, an album or an EP uh, just using the same devices. So you could 
say these are my five devices I really need to make music and go from there. You could easily upgrade every drum instrument that doesn't have a sequencer by using drum sequencer above it and you could store some standard grooves in here that you maybe need in your next song. You could even set up your own patterns in here and save this to the template too. Next thing would be useful utilities and the list here is long, <laughs> but for instance, if this is the last stage of your master section, because uh, of your master chain, because everything in here is everything you would need for a basic master, you could also put in here your meterings if you need that, and maybe some other visualization. You could put the things in here like correlation to check if you are correlation is right and your stereo spread is a, is in phase you could take span by boxango or any other analyzer of the signal so you get the idea you could put everything you need after your master section and then you could combine these into a combinator to make them smaller and Rename that so anyone that uses your session could easily identify where everything is. The next thing are two things to keep in mind if you make a new template. Point seven is regroove patches and block templates. So we open the regroove mixer and in this template there are seven of the eight slots used. But we also got bank B, bank, th bank C and bank D, which we could fill up with our own shuffles. So if we got some cool shuffle sounds in here, we could easily import and save them to our standard template. To see the blocks, you need to go to option and go down here to activate blocks. Now we got to click block in the sequencer <clears throat> and we could rename these blocks so number one is my intro number two is the verse maybe block three is the bridge block four would be the chorus block five would be maybe the b part maybe a transition and let's make it a little bit shorter <clears throat> and we also expand our grid here and let's set the locators to 16 bars here so we get a longer duration to play with and don't have to move it all to, all the time if we start something new next thing to do would be more mixing related but we could drag in four mix channels for our four sense send effects let's open them and and drag them in whilst holding shift so it gets connected the right way and as you see we only got that input going but the output isn't connected to our fx return and that's because we are now have let's make them dark blue and now we got these four mixed channels where our <clears throat> send effect are located problem with this configuration is you are not able to use the returns anymore but there's an easy workaround here and that's by using the direct out and connect it back to the fx return as you see now there is this dotted line here which typically means there is no output for this signal except the fx return so drag it in whilst holding shift same here same here and same here let's connect this up so two goes into uh, into the input and the direct out goes into two return same here for the three and the four and the direct out goes to return three and return four goes to the direct out so, this seems a little bit unnecessary but it enables you greater mixing because now we 
not only got the effect that it's currently in the inset fx of that mix channel we also get all the benefits of the mix channel itself so we could spread our send effects to other send effects which could be useful to uh, simulate more depth into your mix we could apply a filter or an eq we even could compress or gate it if we want to and what's mostly important we could change all of this signal routing of the mix channel itself <clears throat> okay last but not least the last point on our list point nine is commentators and these are free tools that <clears throat> are available at the Reason Shop and these are three little blank plates a small, a medium sized and a big one but even a small one is enough to give you some space to write down what you need to do for instance let's drag this up here uh, beneath our control hub and we could type in the explanation. So my high pass filter equals the filter to dynamic sidechain. So if I see that, I know this high pass filter is to filter out the low ends on the master bus. Or we get more. So sampling input one is my door, two, mic one, three is mic two, and so on. You get the idea. So we get these basic instructions on how to use our template and we could save it with our template. So uh, you could come up with all sorts of things, but I think that's enough to get a little bit into your door. What we could do now is we select everything on the side and drag it over left to the master section so we don't always need to see what we have there once we get our instruments on the third layer. So we only have our master section and our instruments here with all these temporarily unused stuff here. And like I said, we easily could collapse this and make it even smaller. Okay. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, this was pretty much everything I know about template making. Uh, you could even go bigger with that and maybe select all these different outputs to a new output channel. But uh, I think this is a little waste of space. So you, you got all these channels hooked up that you maybe don't need and and now you start to disconnect them and delete them so it's basically a good idea to, uh, basically a good idea to split your sounds but i would split them as i need them and not beforehand make sure you sa to save your template if you don't know where to save it, go to your template folder and select show template folder. It opens in the file browser and you could save your file here in this file location. So let's copy that over and let's save in this file location and call it my starter template or something else and save it there. So next time you want to open something, it's here in the list. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something and could use this for your everyday use of your door. If you liked the video, please hit subscribe and leave a comment down below and leave a like. This helps me and the channel growth a lot and it doesn't hurt you at all. So, I guess that's everything for today. Have a great day. See you next time.